Hello there. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to cut a cap sleeve. I'll actually be making three variations of a cap sleeve, so I will teach you how to draft about three types of a cap sleeve, different variations. So if you want to make a gown, a blouse, a simple top, you can apply these kind of sleeves and try the three kinds of variations to see how they look. The first one I'll be showing you is a cap sleeve that starts from is a, is a cap sleeve that starts somewhere around the armhole. It's not going to end under the armpit. It's going to end somewhere around the armhole. The other one is going to end under the armpit without fabric hanging around the sleeve. The last one is ending under the armpit as well but you have extra fabric to work with in the sleeve. I will show you what I mean. For the first one, we are starting with drafting the basic sleeve. Only that the length is going to be your cap's length. This is my starting point for the sleeve. Okay, to make you understand what I was saying earlier, here is a simple gun, a princess gun. The gun actually has a an invisible zip by the side so i prefer normally i prefer a cap sleeve that has extra fabric under my armpit so that i'll be able to stitch it like a regular sleeve with um, a regular sleeve with side seam going together with my uh, gown sleeve with my gown side seam everything stitched together but in this case i have a zip i have a zipper by the side because I did not put a zipper at the back of the gun, so I had a zipper by the side for easy for ease of wear. So in order to make a cap sleeve for this kind of gun, I need my sleeve to hang somewhere along the handle. Because if I should put a sleeve that has a side seam and stitch it together with this side, like we usually stitch our sleeve to the handle. I'll need to cover up this part of the side seam and it will be difficult to zip and unzip the gown. So in order to be able to wear my gown easily, I need a sleeve that will hand before I get to this part of the gown. So in order to make something like that, I will measure my handle. I'll measure where I want the sleeve to, to start on the armhole of the gun. Assuming I want it to start from somewhere around here, like this. So this is, I'm backing away from my side seam as you can see. I can even move a bit more than that. I can move more away than I had, but I'll just leave it somewhere around here. This is about seven inches. So for the other side to seven inches, that means my sleeve, my armhole length will be seven and uh, fourteen inches. I don't know if you've noticed it before. Anytime you slant a line, you have more, you have more measurements added to the line. Assuming a line was seven inches before and slanted it like the armhole slant, once you slant it like this, the measurement increases. So you have to put that into consideration. In a situation like this, where you don't want your sleeve to extend over the side seam of the garment. Normally, if you are cutting a sleeve and you have extra fabric left, you can always stitch it and trim it out later. But for something like this where I don't want the sleeve, I have a specific place I want the sleeve to hang at. I have to consider that extra fabric that the curve will have on the sleeve. So now I set the curve the cuff of the sleeve I'm cutting is 14 inches. I mean, when I measured where I want the sleeve to start from and end on the armhole of the garment, I ended up having 14 inches. So now, in order to make up for the extra that is always added to the sleeve, I'll divide 14 inches by two and subtract one inch from it. Even subtracting one inch, I'm not even sure that I won't still have excess. My starting point for the sleeve. To cut a basic sleeve, we all know that we usually use the cap height. To, to calculate the cap height, I usually use bust divided by 12. 
that's what I use. But recently I saw a video by the Precious Apparel and she uses this method whereby she had extra one inch to the bust bust and to the cap height. So I said since I am making a cap sleeve and when I divide my bust circumference by 12, I end up having three inches and I think I would prefer it to be longer than three inches. So I said I would use a method and add one inch to my cap's height as well. So in this case, I'll be using a method. A method is that she uses bust divided by 12 plus one inch. Whereas before, my own method is bust divided by 12. So I'm using a method because I want my sleeve to be longer than three inches. So it's your choice. You can try both method and see whichever works for you, whichever one you want to use. But in today's tutorial, I'll be using a method. So to mark my cap height, the formula I'm using is bust divided by 12 plus one inch. My bust is 36 inches divided by 12. I have three inches. Three inches plus one inch. I have four inches. So four inches is my cap height. That's what I'm measuring here. When I measured my hand hole, round hand hole, where I want the sleeve to be, I ended up getting 14 inches. And I said I will divide 14 inches by two, that's seven inches, and subtract one inch from it. So to apply that, I'll measure six inches here. That's 14 divided by 2, 7 inches minus 1 inch, so I have 6 inches. And I'll measure it on both lines, cap height. Next I'll do is draw a diagonal line that will connect the center, center sleeve. Remember when you are cutting this, you have to cut it on fold. That will connect the center sleeve. In fact, I will, I will fold the fact that I will fold the fact so that you can see how to do this. Because the front ample curve is different from the back ample curve, so you have to always cut your sleeve and fold from the folded paper, the folded fabric when you are cutting. I will start all the way. Here is my starting point. Four inches for my cap height. Six inches, like I have measured earlier, 14 divided by 2 minus 1 inch, where 14 is my desired angle measurement, and connect with a diagonal, diagonal line from the center fold to the side seam. Because this will end up being my side seam. Now, if you measure this diagonal line, this, are, this is 7 1 quarter inches. Remember I said that when you use the exact measurement, you end up having extra. That's the reason why I subtracted 1 inch from the measurement I had. 14 divided by 2, 7 inches, minus 1 inch, I have 6 inches. And when I measured this, now it's even one cut, uh, it's even a quarter of an inch more than the measurement I want, but I will use it like that. So I'll divide the measurement by 2. 7 1 quarter is 3, somewhere around here. I'm just marking for a basic sleeve here. I'm drawing the sleeve curve. back sleeve, this is the back sleeve curve, for the front sleeve curve, connect this, I assume you already know how to draft a basic sleeve, and this goes here, and 
this is my back sleeve. So when I open this fold, I'll trace out one side for the back sleeve, while one side will be for the front sleeve. So like I said earlier, for the sleeve I'm working with, because I have a zipper at the side, I want my I want my sleeve to start somewhere up, along the handle, not under the armpit. So for the seven inches, I would have something here. Start here. So my sleeve will end somewhere around here. So I still have extra here. Extra for the zipper to go up and down. I don't, the idea is I don't want to use my sleeve to cover up that zipper area. Now, in order to know where the sleeve will end, I'll just measure. Okay, so this is my sleeve for the first one. Okay, and assuming you already have your basic sleeve block like this, what you just need to do is measure the, the part, the place where you want the sleeve to end on your on your arm hole, assuming I want it to be at 6 inches here, when I measure it, this is 6 inches, I'll just draw a straight line from my center fold and connect. So that's how to cut a calf sleeve that hangs somewhere around the arm hole, not under the arm pit. The next one I'll do is one that starts under, that ends under the armpit. This is my starting point again. For the ones that end under the armpit, there are two variations. One, you have extra fabric to work with. The other one, you just have a strip of fabric to work with. And before you cut, you know, you need to have your seam around so you would have what to stitch to the garment. So in this case, I'm starting with the one that has an extra layer of fabric to work with. Now, if my slip length is seven inches, my basic sleeve. So for sure that Corel added one inch to our cap height, so I think you can try with whichever one, whichever works for you. So this will be my cap height. In this case, because I want my sleeve to run through all the armhole, even to get under the armpit, I would measure my armhole curve. Whenever you want to cut your sleeve, you have to measure your armhole. At least that's the way I do it. I make sure I have already stitched my armhole and measure when I'm ready to cut the sleeve. It's easier for me that way. This is so I'll measure everything round. As this is about 17 inches. You know, I said that when you slant it and have you curve it, uh, the the measurement increases. So 17 inches divided by 2. 17 divided by 8.5. 8.5 minus 1 inch, 7.5. So I'll measure 7.5 here. Inches. And 7.5 inches here as well. Now you are going to connect with a slant line from the center fold to the side seam. 
So we are trying to cut a basic sleeve here. And here you will measure your sleeve circumference or bicep. Here I'm using 11 inches divided by 2, that's 5 inch. And connect. So I have a basic shirt sleeve. Not done yet. I'm dividing this by 2. You know, I measured uh, seven and a half here. So when I measured the slanted line now, I have eight one eight one quarter of a, yeah eight eight one quarter of an inch. I'm going to divide that by two. Eight one quarter by two. That's four about somewhere around here. From there, I mark half inch above that center line and connect to the cup. Back hand hold, back sleeve curve, and the other one will be for the front. Remember when we are drafting our bodies, we usually take in extra from the front arm. That's why the back, uh, front sleeve is also like this. So this is the front sleeve curve. Now this is our cap height. And this is the sleeve hem. For this kind of sleeve, you need extra fabric under your armpit. So you measure the amount of fabric you need. Assuming you want one inch of fabric underneath the armpit on the sleeve, you measure one inch. Connect with a straight line. The next thing I'll do is from there, from this one inch here, I'll connect to this line with a curve. Let me try this. Maybe it will work. Or this. So you are connecting from here to anywhere on the sleeve, uh, cap length to blend it. Now because you already curved this line, it would have added more to the measurement. So you just need to measure one uh, um, quarter of an inch away from this line and connect back to this place. So this is another variation of cap sleeve. Now if you are cutting this one, I'll try to use another color of paint to trace it out. If you are cutting this one, you are starting, the cutting will be I'm tracing the cut line with another color of paint. So to cut this sleeve, you are tracing it like this, tracing this part out. 
and this will be your sleeve. This one has fabric below the cap, cap length, below the cap height. For the last one, there's not going to be any form of sleeve on the cap height. It's just going to blend into this line here. The similarity between this and the next one is they both end under the armpit. So I'll draw a starting line for the next one. This is also the same way we drafted the sleeve, the basic sleeve. I will measure my cap height here. I use four inch, four inches in this case. Four inches. Four inches. I use the same seven and a half I used for the upper one. Seven and a half here. Seven and a half on the cap height. This is the cap height. I need this line to extend. Connect my diagonal line. Find the middle point of my diagonal line. So eight and a half. So this is it. Half inch here at the top. If you don't know how to draft a basic sleeve, this will give you an idea. This is basically how to draft the upper part of a basic sleeve. In fact, I've already done it before I modified it into a cap sleeve. So if you don't know how to draft a basic sleeve, this will guide you. For this kind of cap height, you would subtract about one inch. You can do half inch too. Or let's do one inch. Um, I'm not done with these. I'm home, uh, sleeve curve. Not down the front, so can just connect like so. Just coming by about one inch. I'll do three quarter of an inch here and connect to the side seam as well with the curve. Now this is your and the top variation of the cap sleeve. And I would try to twist it out for you to see what you are cutting. So when you are cutting your sleeve for this scalp sleeve, you are cutting it here and here. To demonstrate that, I will just cut it for you to see how it's done. Remember we didn't have any seam allowance, so when you are transferring to your fabric, Remember to add your seam allowance. That's what you use to stitch it to the garments. This 
this is the sleeve. So in order to cut one side for the back, for the front, so I'll just trace this part out. I'm tracing out this part. This curve below the upper curve, that will be my back, my front, and the sleeve. I mean my front arm sleeve. So when I'm about to stitch this sleeve to the armhole, I'll find the one that applies. You know, this is the front armhole. So if I want to stitch it like this, this is the back armhole. This is the back. So to show you that appropriately, I'll just take this. So the front armhole and the front sleeve must be together, while the back armhole and the back sleeve must be together. That's the essence of cutting the front and the back sleeve separate. That's the reason why you need to cut on four so that you're able to separate them. I'll show you how to cut the second one as well. Again, remember to add your seam allowance before you cut on the fabric. This is my favorite cap sleeve. But because I have a zip by the side of my gun, I can't use this. I just stick to this first one. And for the front sleeve, just trace out the part you're cutting. It's basically the same thing, just showing you everything for those that for those that are not familiar with this. my front it's just cut like this so this this part i'm cutting goes to the front ample front sleeve onto front ample back sleeve onto the back ample let's check it again okay as you can see this cannot work because this is my back this is my front ample and this is my back sleeve. So that means this sleeve will apply to the other side. Yes, exactly. This is my front sleeve. This is my front arm hole. This is my back sleeve. This is my back arm hole. And finally, the sleeve that ends along the arm hole that does not get to the arm hole. This is the one I eventually used for this gun. Probably I'll show you the next one I'm done. So again, cut the front sleeve. Side is going to work for. So this is my okay. This is my back sleeve because it's wider than the front sleeve, so it goes to this side. Back on back, front on front, and always remember to align your center sleeve to the shoulder stitch here. So my sleeve, my back sleeve is going to be stitched to my back armhole, while my front sleeve will be stitched to my front armhole. I hope you've learned one or two things from this tutorial about the cap sleeve. You can try the different variations of cap sleeve here. I would like to see what your half home looks like. Um, using this variation of the cap sleeve for this gun, so I've already caught it. This is what I got. 
this is my front sleeve and this is my back sleeve so i i because it's a tiny sleeve i just faced it with the fabric i used the same fabric for the lining to give it more structure and this is the second one now what i am going to do right now is to stitch the sleeve to the body of the garment like so and also for the second sleeve i'll go ahead and stitch the sleeve to the garment and show you when i'm done okay so remember i said it should be front on front and back on back so my this is the center sleeve I would align the center sleeve to the shoulder seam and run my stitch like so. I'll be stitching the sleeve to the hand hole. So this is where my sleeve hangs on the hand hole. And I'll repeat the same for the other side of the hand hole by stitching the back of the sleeve to the back of the garment. I've stitched the sleeve to the body of the garment, so here is how it looks. I just put wrong right side on, of the sleeve on right side of the handhold and I stitched my same allowance. So I know that this is where my sleeve ended here. My sleeve ended here and here for the back. I can easily access my zip for the side if the zip were to be on this side. But my zip is on the other side, so this is how the sleeve looks. The next thing I will need to do is to overlock the stitch. Once I have overlocked the stitch round, I will take a bias tape. Like this. Remember I would have overlocked the edges of the stitches. Take my overlock like so and follow the bias fold with my stitch. Once I've done that, I'll fold it in to clean off the edges of the stitches, the edges of the seam. I'll do that and stitch the other sleeve. Then I'll show you how it looks. So essentially, this is so this is how the sleeve looks on the garment. Looks nice. 